Welcome back to Jack Daniels. We want to welcome former McNeese great quarterback Kerry Joseph back with us. Uh, brand new to the football coaching staff as wide receiver, yes. co-offensive coordinator. Kerry, welcome back. Uh, it has been many, many years since you have graced us with your presence here at Sound Off 60. At one time, we were Sound Off Live, I believe, when you yeah. were doing the show. Word is that you fell into the negative column for Kevin Guidry, wow. that he was barring you from the show. Wow. I don't know how man. you <laughs> fell in with the Eli cool. Manning okay. crowd. Oh, that my goodness. After man. that one appearance you had like 15 years ago, Guidry I'm not was even like, on I don't care. know, he outshines me. I don't I'm want Kerry Joseph to comment on the show. Kerry's like a brother uh, to me, okay, man? It's like a brother to me. Are man. you saying I'm getting early early Alzheimer's? I don't remember this correctly. No, you don't. It wasn't correct. Not at all. Not at all. If there was anybody we'd like to have on this show, more, uh, I'm just picking. I'm just picking. All right, let's cover some quick ground with Kerry. Yes. Uh, uh, New Iberia, born and raised. Everybody knows your history here at McNeese. Considered the greatest quarterback ever to wear the blue and gold. Went off to play in the NFL, mm -hmm. CFL, special coaching. The, your, your, your life in football has been very blessed and very successful. Why come back to the alma mater now? What is bringing you back? to McNeese State University. You know, it, it's just about timing. Uh, and that's everything in life, right? And, and it, it is. is. Football has been my life. Uh, I've been playing the game since nine years old. Uh, had a chance to play professionally for 17. And to be able to come back to my alma mater, a place where I had a lot of success, uh, it's awesome. It's great. Uh, and to be able to do it right out of football. You know, a year removed, uh, to come join the staff with a guy like Coach Guidry, uh, it was just a great opportunity yeah. and the timing was just perfect. Yeah. Tell people what you've been doing the last four or five years. Well, uh, actually, uh, I went back after 2010. I thought I was going to You got retire. out for a while, didn't you, then went back to uh, the just, CFL? I got out for a year, and then yeah. I went up to the CFL, uh, and I played 12 years up there. Uh, wow. In 2010, uh, I didn't play until like the last two weeks of the season. I thought that was going to be my last year. Uh, I got remarried, uh, and I figured it was time to move on with my life, and I got a call. Uh, from the head coach in Edmonton, and I went back and got another four years in. You basically did a Brett Favre, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> you did yeah. a Brett Favre. I, I retired yeah. and I retired. I did twice. I actually See did that? it after 2013. Yeah. I, uh, I called it quits. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had built a relationship with Coach uh, Sean Payton with the Saints. <laughs> uh, he invited me to do a coaching intern with him yeah. for training camp in 2014. And I went ahead and did that because I knew I wanted to get into coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get hired on that year. Yeah. And at the six weeks left in the CFL season, I got called from Saskatchewan, the Rough Riders, wow. who I had a chance to win the Great Cup with. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, they need some help. They had some injuries, and I got off the couch. I'll be. Got off the couch. Uh, wow. Ten pounds that's, heavier. That's how it happens to a lot of guys, <laughs> and, uh, man. It, it was amazing. I went back for six weeks, and I knew I wanted to retire with them. Yeah. Uh, but to get off the couch and go in the first game, throw for over 300 yards, uh, okay. it, it was, you know what, it was truly a blessing. But I knew at the end of 2014 that it was really, truly time to do it. And uh, I told them after the Great Cup, send yeah. me the paperwork, and it, it's time for it's me to done. move on. Yeah. 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 Kerry, you know, we've talked about a little bit on the show as to some of the moves that Coach Lance Gidry has made on the coaching staff. What does this do, you think, that changed the, I guess, the demographics of what's always been at McNeese? Versus now you've got players that are actually going to be coaching there, that played there, that went on to do pretty, pretty good things. How do you think that will not only affect the university for us, but hopefully people coming to the games, but also affect recruiting? I think one, the biggest thing when you talk about recruiting, uh, you look at myself, Ch uh, Charlie Aro, Zach Bronson. Yeah. When we came in, we came in the beginning of January. Yeah. You know, so our big, uh, our job was to go save these recruits that yeah. already had offers. Exactly. The easy part was we was products of McNeese. Yeah. So yeah. we was able to go into those homes, into those yeah, schools. Not only products of McNeese, I'll throw y'all at success. Extensive pro football. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it was easy for us to sell that right. to, to the athletes yeah. and to the parents. And we all have our degrees. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. from McNeese. So we was able to go into those homes and, and we are a product with success from McNeese because a lot of young athletes, what they want to know, how can I get exactly. to the NFL? Exactly. You know, and we are products of that and had the chance to play in the NFL and yeah. be successful. So it, it's a big plus. Not only that, when you start coaching these athletes, mm -hmm. they're going to respect the information that you're giving them because you have been there. Not saying they won't do it to the other coaches that right. are on staff. Right. But we do have other coaches that are great coaches. Right. The coaches that are left here have been great coaches. But I think you just, the credibility that you have when you're speaking to these young athletes, and I was always taught you got to teach them, you got to reach yeah. them, then you got to demand. Yeah. It's easy. It's a yeah. little bit easier when you've been there. Yeah. Now these kids respect you. They it's understand. It's credibility that you can give. Yes. 
So that's I think it it's is. very important. And the knowledge. Yeah. And that's our job. You know, when you have the careers that we had, uh, Coach John yeah. Gruden told me, he said, now it's time for you to get back to the game because the game has been good to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kerry Joseph, former Cowboy great quarterback, Hall of Famer from the Blue and Gold of McNeese State University, and now uh, new to the Lance Guidry coaching staff mm -hmm. as wide receiver coach, co-offensive coordinator has joined us. Uh, Kerry, you've been around the block. Um, you, you played in the NFL, the CFL. Let's stay on the McNeese front and this recruiting because it's just recent. Uh, 21 signees, if I recall. Five offensive linemen, maybe two or three wide receivers, a couple quarterbacks, and a slew of defensive backs, like five defensive backs. Uh, you, you mentioned you came in January, new to the recruiting game, if you will. I mean, you did it. Yeah. I mean, they recruited yeah. you many years ago. Yeah. Um, some people love it. Some people, it's kind of a bit of part of the, part of the job description. You like I, it? I mean, you're gonna you're gonna really wow, really kind of put gonna, your arms around this recruiting. I'm actually, go, I actually didn't like it. You know, I didn't know. I'm, I'm a very outspoken person. Mm -hmm. uh, and very gregarious. I would think yeah. you're a good recruit. The people tell me be yourself. You know, yeah. they say you know. I have people t tell me you have a beautiful smile. Yeah. Just be yourself. Yeah. And I listened to Coach Gidget twice, two nights back to back, and just the information and the way he was himself in those homes. I was like, okay. I, I kind of get a feel of yeah. it. And then you realize that when you get a chance to talk to these young men uh, and these parents, you know, I really love the fact that I can sell what Magnesia have done for me, mm -hmm. but not only what I can do for their son uh, as becoming a better man. Because 17 years of pro, uh, as a pro football player, you make some mistakes. <clears throat> yeah. You learn some things. And that is what I want to be able to give to these young men. So going in there and really being able to reach one of them, it's going to be challenging. It's you, going to be fun. You meant a key phrase is what I can do for their sons. In the in, in the quick indoctrination of recruiting since January, let's say, did you find yourself wanting to sell mom and dad first or the player recruit? Who you're trying to, you know, kind of get that relationship and that rapport with? Well, mom? you know what? I asked a question uh, when I got inducted. It's mom. I'm going to tell you now. It's, it's mom. It's not sure. mom. It's not it's mom. It's not mom. It's, no, it's, it's not mom. I got in, mom. I got into, when I got inducted into the Southland Conference uh, Hall of Honor, mm -hmm. I asked Coach Kiesel, he was there, what is it about recruiting? And he told me, when you get into that home, you got to find who is the breadwinner. Not as far as uh, the, who's making the most money, right. the breadwinner of who's calling the shot, mm -hmm. who's going to influence that child and his decision. And once you find that, if it's mom, hey, you better get in that kitchen. <laughs> if mom asks you if you want some coffee, tell you. Know. If mom asks you, you want some you coffee right. and you don't drink coffee, you better, you better, take you better go drink some coffee. You better. Yeah. If it's dad, yeah. and dad wants to sit down, now you got to get to dad. It and all depends on the parent right. because that's who's going to influence that child the most. See, and, and, and what happens to that, guys, when you're dealing with a lot of these kids come from single parent homes. Mm -hmm. The majority of them do. And I'm going to tell you what, my mom, bless her heart, was very religious and everything. Coach Jerry Stovall knew that from it's somebody. It's in the back. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you a story, though. He said, Miss <laughs> Guidry, good Lord came to me in a dream and said, your son is going to play at LSU. Mm -hmm. My mom told me, you're going to LSU. Mm. He's yeah. that one. <laughs> that's, that's bottom line. But you so said, what I'm, but hold so on, what but I'm saying, You can't say mom. I'm going to tell you why. You can't say mom. You think about... Uh, What's his name? Landon Collins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look yeah. at his mom wants to go oh, there. Mom LSU. Yeah, she Damn did. well. She did. Oh, she did. Oh, she did. She no, wanted no, to go to LSU. No, I mean, that was and where he no, went? He went to Bama. Yeah. Yeah. He, he went to Bama. Mama's boy, Kevin. <laughs> 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 if he got See, a Mama's right. boy, hey, mom he right. hey, I bet Mom's not complaining right now. No, she ain't complaining right now. No, So it all depends on. If you got a Mama's boy, yeah, who's going to influence and have that biggest influence of that child? Most moms. They want, they want to make sure that child gets the education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and Kerry, you know, I can see how that's going to be a huge thing for you guys because Rick was saying, well, do you wrap your arms around it? You have to. That's what builds your program. Yes. If you can't go into this home to get these kids that you need can make a difference in your program, man, you're not winning. Well, you know what? It's, it's all about uh, the parents want to know is, is my child going to be taken care of? Yeah. So we have to be an extension to that family. Yeah. And the heart I have as a man, and yeah. I know what people have done for me mm -hmm. throughout my career, what Coach Keithley did for me when yeah. I came, because he, him and my dad knew each other real well. Really? He grew up in New Iberia. Really? And I, I'll never forget, I walked out that room and didn't commit. And my dad looked at me and said, you need to go back up in that room what? and commit to he said, because he's going to take care of you. Yeah. And I turned right back around and canceled my trip to the Northwest. Wow. Hold it. Hold it there. Wow. Uh, we're going to take a short pause. We're going to hold you for another segment. I want to yeah. get, I, I get in a little bit more into this recruiting class and then talk a little bit more about NFL, 
CFL, yeah. mm -hmm. your view of the league and what you went through. Because I, yeah. I got some interesting things I want to bring up with Kerry Joseph. All right, we'll take a short pause. We're coming back to Jack Daniels. Stay right.